Welcome to the world premiere of the 2024 Toyota Tacoma TRD Pre-Runner. That's right, we're at the Overland Expo, but there's more because over there, that is the brand new 2024 Toyota Tacoma Trail Hunter. They're very different. One is almost at the very base, and one is almost at the very top, and we're gonna compare and contrast the two of them in this video. So I wanna show you guys some super cool watches and how you can head over to originalgrain.com slash TFL and use promo code TFL for $100 off this limited run of Toyota TRD collection watches. This is the TRD Sport Solar Octane. Now this watch features a solar movement with chronograph function inspired by the hybrid motor from the Tundra TRD Pro, but I'm not done. Now these watches come in a custom Pelican style case and look at all the other accessories included. We've got a multi-tool, an additional wristband, a sticker, a compass, and this plaque, which has the numbering. Now this watch is something really special. What you're looking at here is the TRD Pro Limited Edition with automatic movement with skeleton dial and case back, and a digital camo design inspired by the TRD Pro's Fender. These watches come with a buyback guarantee. If you don't like it, Original Grain will buy it back. See for yourself at OriginalGrain.com slash TFL and use promo code TFL for $100 off the Toyota TRD collection. Here it is, Nathan. What do you think? I grew up in California and I actually had an opportunity to drive old school pre-runners. So the fact that they brought it back is huge. Now, what you're looking at isn't just a little clay model they put together just for us to look at. This is actually a test mule. They've been beating the crap out of this thing for a long time. And if you look at it, you'll notice that underneath there is no current chin spoiler, but there actually is from the factory. They removed it, probably for the show, and there's nine fasteners and it comes off easily. Yeah, and it looks, this is quite nice. There's a good approach angle. Yeah, it looks right pretty here. good to me. And there's recovery hooks down there, if you can see those, Andre. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So Here's they're, they're black and they're a little bit behind and they're attached. Looks like to the frame, so that's all good stuff. That is, but notice the front end. This is really cool. Right out of the factory, that is not what you would call standard. That is actually a little bit of a lift, am I correct? Yeah, because it's a pre-runner. It's a two-wheel drive truck still, mm -hmm. but it does have the ground clearance. Mm -hmm. And how big are those tires? Those, those are, are 31. So let's take a look. They're 31.6. Technically, they call them 32s, but these are 265, 70, R17s. So almost like a 32, and it's a B of Goodrich trail terrain now what's interesting is that back in the day there were other companies that competed having trail runners and essentially or what you're looking at here is a rear drive vehicle that can do some off-roading and one of the reasons why on top of everything else is that it has a rear locker yeah so basically can let's explain pre-runner concept right first yeah. because traditionally a pre-runner truck would be something you would run an off-road trail uh before a race but do it slower and making notes of different obstacles, right? Or driving faster, because a lot of people who are pre-runner freaks feel that these are actually quicker in desert environments because you have less drag on the front end, you have less weight in the front end, and with a locker, you can actually get up and go pretty quickly on sand. So there's a debate about that, and for those of you who may say, oh no, there's no way, think about Dakar and the fastest vehicles that race in Dakar. A lot of them are rear drive. I wanted to look at the back though. Let's start back here because this is not your normal length, but this is actually the longer one, right? Yeah. So what they've done, and we'll go inside in a second, uh, um, it's a two-door cab. They call it extra. Yeah, those, yeah. those rear doors do not open, folks. Nope. And the rear glass doesn't roll down. That is correct. Um, and it's once again done for affordability, right? Mm, yep. So this is a little bit more lower on the lower scale of their grade well, range. So they start at the SR and yes. then they go to SR5. the SR5 and then this. Yes. Okay. Now what's important about this is that you're going to notice that it has leaf spring suspension. That is something that only two grades have, the SR and this. Once you get to the SR5, you have coils in the back. Yeah, and then of course TRD Sport, TRD Off-Road. There's eight grades now, my friend. Uh, that's a lot more than before. So does this have the base engine? Uh, yes, so it's really uh, their core engine. It's a 2.4 liter turbocharged engine. But Sheldon was telling us that the bed sides here are aluminum. Do you want to open the tailgate? Yeah, and I believe the tailgate is also much lighter than before, and so is the hood. They yeah. saved a ton of weight by doing it this way. By yes. the way, that is still composite, my friends. Composite bed, the six-footer. So let's uh, let's stop here and then continue in, on the inside as well. That sounds good. So Nathan, the other thing we notice is that full-size spare, of course, the two-inch receiver, seven-pin connection for trailering, four-pin connection, and Tacoma, the new one, will be able to tow up to 6,500 pounds if you configure it correctly. 
That is correct, which is an interesting way to go. I didn't, they weren't going for best in class. They were going for, I think, what they, people are used to in their class. One more thing you missed, though, at the bumper. Are you talking about this TRD exhaust pipe? No, 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 no. Look around where oh, you can oh. actually lift it, the hard oh, points. This. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, some of them are also have this and also attachments for a high lift jack. So that's really important. But once again, two-wheel drive, rear locker, and the power number, if this is an eight-speed automatic, is uh -huh. 278 horsepower oh. and 317 pound-feet of torque. And that's the base engine. That's, they call it core, like the most common people will get. That's the base engine. Yes. All right, so all right, let's, let's we're going to try to, all right, we're going to open this up here and let's have a look-see. So, a couple things, first of all, all new interior, but we're going to cover that in just a second. But this is the important part. The rear doors do not open, the rear glass does not go down. There's a reason for that, because the rear passengers do not come in here. Look what's in there. Yeah, so let's take a look. So it's basically a storage solution, right? So little lockable, um, I would say compartment right here on the driver's side. That is correct. And, and then more. Yes. So little little pockets on the side uh, where you can store things. And also the rear panel will go down completely. Guys, can you help me open open this up? Yeah. Check this out, dude. A full pegboard basically. If you think about how many people have pegboards in their garage holding tools and whatnot. That is really cool. But here's another part. So we talked to one of the head guys who put this all together, and he said that they're going to be able to give you software where you can actually program a 3D printer to come up to very, with various hooks to hold various tools, even a fishing rod and whatnot, and you'll be able to pop that in and have a 3D printer take care of it and pop it into the peg. So you have your own customizable setup on your pegboard, which is very cool. They have a kind of a... Um, really mean looking hatchet in there right now <laughs> yeah well i don't think that's toyota they're, standard they're not messing around no i think that's just the toyota designers going you know what don't screw their truck but i also noticed the center console still has cup holders mm -hmm. right these seats um can you help me lean this down yeah yeah pull this up so here here's basically a comfortable driving position right mm -hmm. uh two-tone material so it's not like oh a sea of black right no I, i'm really glad they started listening to people about uh, not doing everything in black i do like the new interior setup it's it's similar to the old one in terms of it being very angular but they still managed to make it look fresh yeah and also we can see a slightly smaller screen yep here uh the other model will look at the trail hunter you will see how fancy that interior is with giant screens as well well we're only a couple steps up from the base model when you're looking at this one which is one of the reasons why we wanted to contrast the two because this is near the bottom this is very affordable and then we're going to go up to what i consider very unaffordable yeah and you can see of course here's the rear locker switch uh -huh. um, automatic start stop disable of course it will come back uh, after you restart the truck drive mode selector tow haul mode parking brake all this stuff and usb-c ports for faster charging as well actual toggle switches and large knobs thank you very much toyota for doing that and a digital screen and by the way uh power steering is electric yeah so it's electric power steering on everything right yeah, and that's because the TSS, they call it Toyota Safety Sense 3.0 system, uh -huh. which is their driver assistance technology. Well, by the way, I just noticed something. Uh -huh. There's some Braille or Morse code over here. Okay, well, uh, I can't read Braille and Morse code. I'm pretty rusty. I've only got like three words down. So, hey. guys, help us decode this, please. Please, in the comments below, help us decode this. We should show them the seat, the one that goes flat that has been pushed. Uh, yeah, do you want to walk around really yeah. quick? Yeah. So let's talk about Toyota Safety Sense because this is, you know, the latest system that Toyota offers. Um, and it's also, um, and that's why they needed that electric steering and they needed to have all that stuff done. Yeah, so what we've uh, noticed is that Toyota is taking it a step further because everything they build now has some form of Toyota Safety Sense standard. Okay, check this out. So this folds completely flat. This is a hard surface. I think and it you has put your tie laptop down. on here too. Yeah, you can put your laptop on here. There are tie downs here too. Actually made of metal. It's not like some cheap plastic, which is interesting. Um, and then you can clearly see the pockets over there. Yeah. I bet you guys are wondering, hey, what about other markets? Are they gonna make this thing, you know, with rear seats? Nope. We heard it directly from Toyota. Yeah. Absolutely not. This is only going to be two passenger. So no seats in the back. So here's the thing. Every other manufacturer, Ford, 
General Motors, uh, even Nissan to some extent, they walked away from shorter cabs. I mean, Nissan still offers the King they, Cab. They have the King Cab yeah. Nissan, yeah. But at least Ford and General Motors are going crew cab all the time. Mm -hmm. And you guys have been asking us. Also, Jeep has a crew cab only. That's correct. Well, you got it now. Yeah, I mean, so stop for, those, for those of you guys who've been screaming and saying, look, I want a two-passenger vehicle, I mean, you know what's going to happen? What? They're going to say, well, wait a minute, there's no bench seat. What's up with that? I can't put three people up there. No sale. So, Losers, I hate you. Can, I mean, that's what's going to happen. Can we ever satisfy no. these people? God, no. All right, so let's uh, snap our fingers a little bit, and let's, let's go look at the trail hunter. All right, here's the snap. But Nathan, I'm sorry, there's four. <laughs> One more thing. So, so this floor panel actually is removable. And I didn't realize that, uh -huh. but it uh, it uh, reveals first of all the uh, um, jack kit, right? So you yep. can jack up and change your tire. That's correct. But also a space for hitch receivers, so you can store it nicely and not have it rattle. You know, it, in my little tiny wannabe pickup, I actually have a little spot where in the back under the seat where I put my hitch receiver as well and so, they actually made a spot for that so they actually have a yeah. made spot for it, which is yeah. great to have so th this this kind of hefty yeah this is actually kind of beefy isn't it i thought it would be flimsy well you have to put some maybe a you know a heavy suitcase or a toolbox on it well in your case a gen y hitch <laughs> slap it on there plump check this out dude this is the trail hunter and it has a lot of interest because there's a lot of people here there is indeed so sorry about the background noise and whatnot but here's the good news yes we already saw a trail hunter but this is actually different than the one that you saw in hawaii because yes. this one actually has the longer bed so in essence this is as high as you can go so we went from you know almost the base model all the way up to the very top of the line and they are completely different trucks yeah you can have long bed six foot bed like uh, sheldon the chief engineer was telling us also a five foot bed with this configuration so if you want the long wheelbase you got it if you don't want it you also have it that is correct uh, there's only one cab configuration available so that two door that you just saw that's not this Yes, but now you see um, they're adding a lot of features. For example, exterior lights in this bed cap, um, ARB components, right? You got the sports bar, you got a roof rack. Keep going. Yeah. Look at this. This is way different from what we just saw. My God. So, uh, so what is all that back there? That's molly panels everywhere. So uh, by molly panels, we mean these. Um, and this basically came from the military, right? Uh -huh. Where you can weave a different attachment through it. You can put a, your backpack attached. Does that include these? Um, no, I no think those are actually are, to the bed, aren't they? These are attached to the, uh, to the bed over So these here. are similar to the ones that we saw before that were available um, about a year ago. Yeah, so... Uh, and that's how, that's why this is the top dog, you know, and it, we don't have pricing yet. No, this uh, is the, going to be definitely at the very top. Oh, look at this snorkel or whatever they're going to call it. Ah, uh, it's not called the snorkel. Of course, it's the desert, desert air, air intake. intake. Yeah, that's so you guys, if you drown them, can't sue Toyota. So, so passenger side uh -huh. and look how low profile they made it. That is super low profile. So it's so when you're the driver looking out, you probably won't notice this very much. Yes. Oh, interesting. Of course, Trail Hunter badging. So this is uh, their new grade. So you used to TRD Pro probably. Uh -huh. That's still there. And we have a full video around it. Right. But Let's... this is a Trail Hunter, which is in addition to the Pro. Okay. So we are talking, of course, lift. So what's the suspension setup? It's Old Man Emu, right? Yes, yeah, so Old Man Emu. You can see it right here in the front. This also offers disconnectable front sway bar. Oh, okay. Um, skid plates. Uh, you know how the uh, Colorado ZR2 Bison has boron steel everywhere yeah well this is similar to this oh no kidding so you can see the front skid plate with a really cool design that says trail hunter but then below it you can see more skid plates running all the way down and also the rear differential is protected this is interesting now i knew that rigid was working with toyota and in the past they had like the cube style setup that almost looked like an afterthought but now it looks like they have lighting here and here am i correct yeah, and also this is pretty fancy. This can change color from white to yellow. No kidding. With the flip of a switch. Is that something that's actually going to be usable off-road? Well, maybe during foggy conditions. Oh, okay. You so it turns from a fog light to an off-road light. Is kind of. Saying. Okay. Yeah, so that's that's really really. That serious. is an interesting idea. By the way, we have to talk about power, right? Oh, so this if, is this the hybrid? Yeah, hybrid only. Oh, okay. So in the upper echelon of the new Tacoma for 2024, they will have hybrid only models and this is where 
you have you know the TRT Pro, the Limited, and of course the Trail Hunter. Right. And it's the, still the 2.4 liter turbocharged engine. Right. But it's made it to an electric motor and an eight-speed steel, so no ten speeds. And the maximum power output is 326 horsepower and 465 pound-feet of torque. It's, I mean, 465. That is, that's diesel territory for a little truck like this. Yeah, this is almost full-size, like half-ton diesel territory torque. Yeah, precisely. Um, I wanted to point out a couple things too. A lot of badging even on suspension components. And all these suspension components, components are unique to this vehicle because there is also a TR, TRD Pro, right? Yeah. And that has a very different type of layout. Yeah, <laughs> different color schemes, different uh, labeling, and also Fox 2.5 EQS uh, three shocks. And this is, of course, Old Man Emu. Old Man Emu. I've actually worked with Old Man Emu before. Uh, actually, remember our Land Cruiser? Yeah. We put Old Man Emu's suspension That's right. on that. That's right. Uh, and this is a 33 technically tire. This is a Goodyear Wrangler Territory RT. Uh-huh. Uh, can we look inside a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Why don't you pop that door? Oh, you know They're what we bit. missed? Huh? You know what we missed last time? People wanted me to sit in the back. Do you mind uh, filming me? No, we're good. He's going in. Let me sit in the back because yep. I'm gotcha. A lot of you said, uh, "Is there space?" Do, yeah, is there space? Well, so let's find out. Let's check it out. Now, Andre is about six three, right? You're... Okay, so you got some leg room. Is that seat all the way back in the front, though? I think so. So my knees were just touching, as you can see, okay. in the front, and my hair was touching a little bit on the on the ceiling, um, but. Still, I felt okay. I felt okay with it. Um, Do you think it has more room than your Colorado? Hmm. More room than your Colorado. You're on the spot. I think it's about equivalent. Bah! I say it has more. Okay. That's what I say. Hold on. Let me show you something else. All right. Go ahead. Uh, this is where the hybrid battery lives. Oh, no right. kidding. So it's underneath, it's underneath and it's next to the 12 volt, isn't it? Yeah. The 12 volt is underneath the passenger seat here and then the nickel metal hydride, so it's not lithium batteries. Right, but they, they did that because they were going with a tougher setup on their battery, right? They wanted like a, they know that nickel metal hydride is a kind of a beefier battery in terms of like abuse and everything else. Yeah, and maybe even lifespan. Well, I yeah, mean, I mean, if you think about it, they've had them best. on Prius for years. And also it's the same battery as the, um, in the Tundra, so 1.87 kilowatt hours. Yeah. Um, so they're using some components from the Tundra. This is kind of a baby Tundra in some ways. Yeah, uh, but with a course, better looking interior and exterior and <laughs> is better, nicer and, you know, in many ways. Yeah. And also tow hooks. And it has tow hooks. I know, I'm, I'm sure they're sick and tired of hearing about that. Check this out. We have auxiliary switches here as yes, well. Yes, which is really cool. You know what else? What? Whoa, you just, you just removed the Morse code. Yeah, I removed the Morse code. That says you could put your stuff in here, bro. That's exactly what that says in Morse code. And <laughs> yeah, no, I saw somebody else do it, so I'm just stealing what they did. But yeah, it's a little cubby right there. You can hide stuff in. And look at the size of the screen. So we were mentioning different interiors. Much larger screen. Similar switching for the HVAC controls. Um, and of course, curl control modes, four wheel drive control, no four wheel drive auto, uh, trailer backup assist, camera views, 360 degree camera views. Uh, the sunroof, you know, they told me the sunroof will not be on the production trail hunter because of the roof rack systems. They felt like the sunroof was not necessary on the trail hunter but other trims will have a sunroof uh, as well okay well that so so at least it is available in some cases yeah so okay. let's step back because i want to take a wider view yeah let's take this. a look so uh, uh, let's address some viewer questions right yeah um some of you have asked us already will the tacoma be able to be flat towed uh behind the motorhome that's a really good question yeah so i, I checked with sheldon the yeah. chief engineer and he said uh, they didn't design the truck for that specifically. Um, it's very the same way as the previous Tacoma would be. So the, he said you could put it in neutral, right? Uh -huh. You can put the transfer case um, in neutral, uh, but then you have to monitor temperatures. Um, so really, it wasn't really designed to be flat towed. So uh, put it in the trailer if you're towing it. Here's a question. What? Can you get one of these with a manual transmission? No, unfortunately, because it's all hybrid, 
right? Because it's all hybrid, right? Uh -huh. uh, they only have the manual on the non-hybrid versions. Gotcha, gotcha, okay. But you could still go pretty high up in terms of the capability off-road with a manual version, am I correct? Yeah, absolutely, because here the off-road model, which is not here, and that's the other question that we got from our viewers. Uh, the other question was, where is the TRD off-road? And I asked that, uh -huh. and they said it's coming a little bit later this year because the trucks will go on sale. Uh, the non-hybrids will go on sale by the end of this year. Okay. So I think November, December, you should see them at your dealers and being delivered to you guys. Pricing will be available closer to that, right? And oh. then, and then something else, um, the hybrids, like this one, will be available on sale early next year. All right. Well, that sounds pretty good for you. But which one fans. would you buy? Oof. Well, you only saw two of them, not all, not yeah. all grades. Yeah, that's right. Even though this was the debut officially for what I think is going to be one of the more popular ones, which is the two door. I just think that's extraordinary that they brought it back. And I love the fact that they actually went with the design. I wanted to show this to you guys because this is fantastic right here. The front end, this Hold is still on. a Tacoma in every way, shape, and form. So Sorry. from a distance, you can actually see it. Just push the, uh, can you, right isn't that extraordinary? Yes. I just love the fact that they did that because if you look at the Tundra, it doesn't really look like a Tundra to me, but when you look at a Tacoma, it is a Tacoma. And from a distance- They, they ma maintain that DNA. Exactly, and I think yeah. a lot of you guys are gonna really dig that. Sweet, well, um, by the way, let's close at the rear end because we mentioned suspension systems, right? Yep. Um, and you could see just, really briefly as we wrap up, that this is a multi-link uh, with the old man Nemo setup. And coil springs. Yeah. Wow. It's, it's pretty remarkable that they also offered so many choices on suspensions. Yeah. It's I insane. just did not expect that. And that is yet another little treat for you Tacoma fans. So, oh yeah, hit it. Let me try. Oh, a lot of you said um, the tailgate won't open because it's articulating. Wrong. Well, it, opens. it just opened. This is, this is once again, their composite. So the setup in here, even though I think these are aluminum, right? The fenders? Yes, the rear so, bed sides. Yeah, yeah, but the inside is still this composite, which from what I gather is extremely rigid. Yeah, um, and then also um, you mentioned, some of you mentioned that this is slippery, so you can put a coating on this. Uh -huh. So even at the dealership or even you can um, select it as an option, you can put a little bit uh, more rough coating on this, uh -huh. or they also sell uh, rubber bed mats. Okay, I wouldn't use rubber bed mat personally, but well, I, because it's taking away some of the payload. Yeah, exactly. They didn't increase it, but the coating sounds a lot more logical to me. Yes. By the way, you want to look over there real quick. See that Forerunner? Yes. So one of the things they're doing, and we are at the Overland Expo, and so they're having a cool little off-road course that yes. Toyota's uh, hosting, where you can jump into one of the Toyotas over there. Yep and I uh, take it around this course. Unfortunately, if you're wondering if they're gonna allow anybody to drive these things, no, not the new Tacomas. Those things are gonna be months away before anybody gets their hands on them. Yeah, well, there you have it, guys. This is the full comparison. You didn't answer my question, though. No. I asked you which one would you buy, and of course, we don't know quite enough, but did you like that extra cab? I really like the extra cab, but I, I still have kids and dogs and a wife. So <laughs> the answer is I would have to go with something that has more capacity, but, that manual transmission is very tempting. Mm. So, And you can get it in a double crew cab. Yeah, double crew cab, as long as it's very off-road capable. It doesn't have to be a hybrid, although I am kind of bummed because I thought it would be really cool to have a manual transmission with a hybrid setup. Sorry. Yeah. And we don't have fuel efficiency ratings. No, so, we don't know. So we, we can't quite decide which one to buy quite yet. Yeah, something tells me that it'll be a little bit more efficient than the old, um, the old setup. All right, well, thanks guys for joining us here at the Overland Expo West 2023. And there you have it, the world debut of the Extra Cab and of course the Trail Hunter.